Hi guys, uh, this is Marcin and welcome to the second part of our YouTube guide on how to become an Arena Grandmaster. Uh, this time we'll be talking about deck building. Okay guys, so the first thing I want to talk about with regards to deck building is deck strategy. Um, if you followed part one, you already know all the cards, you know all the classes, so you also should be able to decide which strategy you can take with a class. So we've picked a class in the arena, now we'll be building our deck. Uh, we'll be presented with uh, packs of free cards, we'll be picking the best that we think is the best or for our deck. So even before we start this, after we've picked the class, we need to think what kind of strategy will we follow. So different classes can follow different strategies, like a warrior will be the best example. Warrior can be very aggressive, or warrior can be very controlish, with uh, some armors and some tones, uh, big tones, etc. So, Normally, uh, as I play it, I decide what I want to do, uh, even before I start picking. Because if I decide I want to go full aggro, I will value cards uh, which are aggressive higher, and then if I'm able to get those cards, I'm ending up with a very strong deck. So, my deck was supposed to be an aggro, I got the aggro cards, and it's a full aggressive deck, and it works. Like, I fulfilled my plan. And um, if I want to go a control deck with a lot of taunts, then I also know what I want to pick, so I'm picking those cards, fulfilling the strategy, and I uh, end up with a very concise deck, uh, which fulfills the strategy and it just works. Uh, obviously it doesn't doesn't work every time, because sometimes, you, even if I think like I'm going full aggro, uh, there is a chance that I'm not getting a, lo a lot of charge cards, a lot of aggressive cards, not early weapons, sometimes you, you can't... It happens that you don't get a single weapon in a full warrior arena, which is uh, really weird, but, but it happens. And you know to, you, you have to adjust, you have to be flexible with regards to that. So, I'd say that around peak 12, 15, you need to make an evaluation. If you are fulfilling your strategy, because if you are not, you need to make an educated change and uh, to make this conscious decision that, hey, this is not the strategy I'm following, so I need to change here. I need to pick a, a bit different, a, a bit a bit differently, to, to actually have a bit different deck. The deck won't be as strong as the initial idea that you had. But then it won't be as weak as well, so it will be a solid deck in the end, depending on the cards you get. But yeah, like strategy is the first thing you need to keep in mind when you are building a deck. You need to think about it even before, and if you fulfill it, you are on a on a very good way to to the nine x uh, win. So that's the first part. Another important thing that you need to keep in mind with regards to deck building is bomb recognition. And by bomb recognition, I mean that you need to recognize which cards are better than others. We call them bombs. So, when you see those cards, you know that you need to pick them. And um, I don't expect you to just know which cards are better. And I also uh, advise for you to not uh, guess which card is better, because uh, then you can hurt yourself. So, here again, you need to... Um, like go to the sources you need to to check the forums you need to check discussions ask uh, other players and then um this research was, uh, will help you to recognize which cards are bombs and which card are not bombs so the regular cards that you can just evaluate on the on the current deck situation and on the current pick situation so yeah so it's very important to identify bombs early and to to learn which cards are just better to, to be able to uh, not miss them and then pick them as soon as possible, as soon as we get an um, opportunity to, to actually pick them. So yeah, so that's BAM recognition. Another part in this guide uh, are the minion stats. And with regards to minion stats, it's an interesting topic because a lot of people just don't, uh, don't know about it. It's one of the basics. Um, it's a TCG basic, but... Uh, I know that a lot of Hearthstone players are not uh, former TCG players, so this is why I will introduce you to this this uh, philosophy of uh, of minion stats. So, um, the minion stats should be more or less as the cost of the minion. So let's take like a four drop because it's it's easier to it's the easiest to, to explain this. So if I take a, a four drop, so a, a minion that costs four mana. The regular stats that I will get are a 4-4, four, 4 four attack, 4 health. If I get less than this, it's below the curve. So the standard stats that I should get for 4 mana is a 4-4. Four, four. If I get more stats, that's above the curve. So that's more, that's better. So like a 4-5 is better. 
and I will quickly explain how it works. So if, I, if I'm a starting player and it's my turn 4, I'm playing a Yeti, a 4-5, which is a blank, it does nothing, but it's a 4-5. And then it's your turn 4, will you play an Ogre, like a 4-4? Four, four? It, it might be a situation that you have to play an Ogre, but if you do, my turn 5, I just kill your Ogre with a Yeti, play a 5-drop, a 5-5. Five, five. And a board position is that I have, I still have a Yeti which has 4 attack and 1 health. It's like, it, it's easy to kill, but it's still like a Yeti which is a 4-1. And I have a 5 rope which is a 5-5. Five, five, and you have nothing. So what do you do? Your turn 5, you need to play something. And if you have a 5 drop that, that has only 4 health, then you are really really behind. Because I kill it with a Yeti, and I attack with my 5 drop, and I can trade... Um, trade like this till the end of the game, like I will be always attacking you, I will be always having this minion on board. So this is really important to, to look, at, look at those stats uh, when, when we are building a deck and evaluate the cards uh, properly. Obviously there are exceptions to this rule. For example Spellbreaker. Uh, it, for 4 mana it's a 4-3, which seems really bad with regard to the stats, because some of the 2 drops even kill it with free attack, because it has only free health. But on the other hand, it has a great ability that gives silence, which is one of the best abilities in game. Um, which is also uh, because like the developers of the game, uh, they try to keep cards balanced, which is why if it has silence and is better because of silence, it has less health to be um, to be a bit weaker with the stats. Which is why also Yeti is a blank because it's a 4-5. So the general rule of thumb is that for free mana, you should get a free free. If you get more, that's great. Like Injured Blade Master is essentially a four free for free, which is very good. Even if, it, if even if you are not playing a priest deck, he's still a good card because he's above the curve. He's a four free for free, which is very good. For four, you already know like a Yeti is a very good card, even if it's blank. It's a four five, which uh, which gives you a lot of advantage. And, uh, and then, like, for, for 5, it's a 4-5, mostly for 6, uh, 6-6, 7-7, six, six, seven, seven, 4-7, seven, etc. A 2-drop is a bit of exception, because a 2-drop, um, it should be a 2-3 or a 3-2. If you're getting a 2-2 two, two for 2, that's bad. The only exception here is, I think, Taskmaster as a warrior card, uh, because when he comes into play, he deals 1 damage. So you can do some shenanigans with it. But mostly, you really need a 2-3 or a 3-2. Which is better, 2-3 or 3-2? At this point, I'm not sure. Like, it's a preference call. Uh, some people like a 3-2 because uh, you are able to, to kill a 3-drop. And others like a 2-3 because if uh, your opponent plays a 2-2 or has a 2-1 from, uh, from turn 1, you can still kill it with a 2-3 and it still lives. So really, it's, it's a preference call, but you get the idea. Like, those uh, minion stats are really important and you really need to take care of this. Another example of a, of a potentially bad card is um, a Cult Master, which is a 4-2. So it has it's a gimmicky effect that uh, when a minion dies, you draw a card. But on the other hand, like it's really easy to kill because on, it, it only has to half. And I, I'm not only talking about killing with, with minions because uh, spells as well. If if something has like free health, uh, let's take Frostbolt for example. So Frostbolt is 4-2. If something has free health, you can kill it with Frostbolt. If something has 4 health, you can kill with Frostbolt, but then you have to use a Hero Flip. If something has 5 health, you need to use the Flip, like uh, if you are playing a Mage, and I'm, um, regard as a Flip I'm um, talking about a Hero Power, so you need to uh, use it twice and still use the Frostbolt. So you need to spend more resources to actually kill something, even if it has just one more health. So it's really important uh, to look at this. I can also add to, to this that um, with regards to health, we have some kind of a magical number. So when you're looking at health, like 5 health is a magical number because it's it's easy to deal 4 damage, up to 4 damage. It's hard to deal 5 and, uh, five and more. So um, so yeah, look look at this, uh, like analyze the allies, uh, the minions, make your guesses and look at those stats um, and always keep it in mind. Yeah, so it's very important to look at the minion stats. The next thing I will talk about is uh, is curve, and curve is really important. You can actually see the curve uh, when you are drafting, like when you are picking the cards. So the curve is how many guys do you have uh, 
with costs of two, three, four, five, six, etc., etc. And it's all, it's um, that's it. It's a curve. So uh, a healthy curve will be like a mountain, I guess. Like um, you have a really a, a really little number of one drops. You have uh, a couple of two drops, a couple of three drops, uh, most of three drops and four drops. Then less five five drops, less six drops, etc. So mostly. At the current state of the game, one drops are, are useless. So when you are playing an arena, like every most of the one drops that you can play will just die. Um, it also depends on the strategy uh, strategy that you will be using, because if you are playing a more aggressive deck, you can consider uh, to to take a couple of one drops. Uh, like for example, Leper Gnome is very good because it, it deals a lot of damage, and if they can't uh, um, counter Leper Gnome, it may deal like uh, two eight damage by itself. But one drops uh, in general, one drops are bad, and uh, one drops like uh, one one guy, uh, one one pig, or whatever, are really really bad. Like don't don't take them. Uh, with two drops, um, this is a very important turn. Like two drops are so important, and but again, like you need to take care of the minion stats. So you really want to have the two free or free two guys. Um, a money berserker is the best. It's the, the best two drop that you can have because it, it's really easy to, to pump him up uh, into a five two five one guy and kill something bigger. So with two drops, you want to have like f I'm I'm usually having four. Um, it's it's three five I guess. And but okay, I don't I don't, I actually don't um, agree with three. I think four five mostly. Yeah, like three is uh, too little. So four five two drops. Um, with three drops, I think it's four again, four five, four drops, four five as well. Uh, like you really need to have if turn three, turn two, turn three, turn four. You really need to play something. Th those are very important turns. You really want to play some beefy guy that that, that will be on the board or to deal with uh, what your opponent plays. So it's really important to have those. Turn five. Uh, there is a couple of good turn five guys, but I want to have like three, four in your deck. Like you are getting smaller here. With turn six again. Like a couple of turn six guys, three, two, three, three, four, maybe depends on the deck strategy. Turn seven, not really um, very expensive, and uh, you won't probably won't play them. Also, there's a lot of answers to big guys. Like if you play a turn seven guy, you want to have a couple of them because you want to have some um, end game push. But then if you play a seven seven guy and they just hex it for free, uh, you just lose a card. Or if they just damage it with something small and execute. Or, uh, there is a lot of answers to big guys, and you, you spend a lot of resources to play to put uh, to play it on the board, and it, it can be easily removed. And so uh, the same with a drops. Like you want to have a couple in your deck, but you don't want to have a lot of them. Like you mostly need to focus on turn two, three, four, uh, and five as well uh, as a push. So and there is a, a lot of good six drops as well. So this is it. This is the curve. Um, obviously you need to remember that you also can um, use, like for turn 6, turn 5, you can also use combinations of cards. So, like maybe you can have more 2 drops in your deck, and then turn 5 you can just play a 2 drop and a 3 drop. Also like, uh, or just um, more 3 drops, and then you will be using your hero fl flip more. Uh, if you're a mage for example, you, you always want to use your hero power to actually deal that damage. Uh, turn 6 is uh, like you can play 2 3 drops, or a 4 drop and a 2 drop. So yeah, when uh, when picking cards in the arena, you really need to take this uh, into consideration. And also, it's uh, important to uh, evaluate the cards when you're picking, because sometimes your curve will, will decide what you actually should pick. Because when you are presented with a, with a pick, it's not that you are just evaluating the card, oh, this card is better, this card is worse, so I pick this card, uh, just on its uh, own strength. That's not enough. When you're making a decision, and if you're like above uh, 16th pick in your arena run then you need to see if this particular pick will make your deck better or not because there might be a situation that there is a decent free drop and an awesome five drop and then you look at your deck and you look like look at your curve and you have like two free drops only and four five drops so what the awesome five drop will do it will make your deck worse because it will be more clunky like the, the curve will be bad and a free drop, which is just okay, will make your deck a lot better because your curve will improve immensely. So always, when you're picking cards, take this into consideration. Like consider the curve because it influences the value of the of, of the particular cards a lot. So please always keep it uh, keep it in mind with regards to deck building. 
And the last thing I want to talk about in this guide are strengths and weaknesses of the deck. So you've built your deck, congrats, it's a, it's a solid deck, that's, that's really good. But then like, don't click that play uh, so hastily, I just wait a moment and analyze what you actually have. So I assume that you have a strategy, you've probably fulfilled it, you have those, uh, those allies, uh, minions, you know their stats, you know that some of them are better, you know that some of them are, um, are bad because you had to pick them because there was nothing else. So now just quickly go through your deck and see what you actually have. Like, did you fulfill your, uh, your aim? Do you, do you follow your strategy? Like, what are the strengths of your deck? What are this, um, the weaknesses of your deck? It's really important to know this. For example, maybe you fall with a warrior, but you have no taunts. So you have very aggressive deck with absolutely no taunts. This means that your deck is really bad uh, with regards to defensive power. So you, your only strategy is to move forward, kill the dudes, trade minions and, and move forward. If you are, um, if you are losing and if, if, you are, uh, if you need to defend, then that's probably a lost game. But if you actually realize this, if you know about this weakness, maybe you will be able to avoid it. Like, because you will be more desperate to push with damage and to not get um, pushed into defensive. Um, also know your strengths. Maybe you have a lot of removal. So this means that you won't need to, to trade with your allies, with your minions, but then you will be able to use this removal to destroy what they play and just push with your, with your dudes on the board. So it's really important to evaluate your deck before you start playing. So that when you start playing, you exactly know what you have and how you will, you will play the, de the deck. You really need to have this winning image of the deck in your head. You really need to create it and then follow it to get the 9 wins uh, straight. Okay guys, so that's it for the deck building guide. I hope you enjoyed it and um, I'm sure you are improving as we speak. Uh, sorry for mixing some Warcraft terminology in. Um, I'm calling uh, sometimes I'm calling minions as, as allies, but I hope it's not that confusing. So I really hope that we can uh, meet again in the part three. I'm currently working on it. So yeah, let's improve together and go to part three. It's very exciting to to, to be there. And um, that's it for today. See you in part three, guys. Bye.